Hi guys, it's Doc Curry, and on Wednesday, the Federal Reserve is once again expected to raise interest rates, but this time, the market expects the Fed to pivot. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this very important Fed meeting, so let's get into it. Before we talk about the Fed meeting that's coming up on Wednesday, there is one piece of important market news that you need to know about that's affecting some stocks in the stock market. Snap and Meta shares popped after the SEC commissioner said the U.S. should ban TikTok. Now, it's important to understand two things here. One, just because the SEC commissioner says that the U.S. should ban TikTok, does not mean that TikTok will actually be banned. We actually went through this a few years ago, back when Trump was in office, and there was some talks about maybe Microsoft taking over TikTok in the US and all this other stuff. In the end, nothing ever happened. So at this point, this is basically just a rumor and Snap and Meta are just rising on hopes that TikTok could somehow get banned here in the United States. Now, the really important thing to understand about TikTok, and if it does get banned, how it might affect stocks, is the fact that TikTok isn't really rising because of short form video. TikTok is rising because of the way that it focuses on user interest rather than user connections meaning platforms like Meta especially, as well as Snapchat and many others, they really focus on who you're connected to, who your friends are, so they can show you content from your friends. TikTok doesn't do that. TikTok focuses on what you're interested in and it shows you the content that you most want to watch. That is why TikTok has been so successful and that's why even though YouTube and Meta and Instagram and Twitter and all these people have started to release short form video on their platforms, they're not seeing anywhere near the success that TikTok has seen because they have the completely wrong algorithm. So far, nobody's been able to duplicate TikTok's algorithm. The fact is, TikTok would be successful no matter what the medium was. It didn't matter if it was short form video or text or long form video or anything, it doesn't matter. The point is, they focus on user interest and nobody else at this point does. So even if TikTok does get banned, it's not necessarily gonna help Meta and Snapchat start increasing in subscriber growth. It could help a little bit, but it won't help a lot. And the other thing to keep in mind is that both of those companies, both Snapchat and Meta, they're not down because user active users is necessarily down. They're really down because advertisers are down. There's just a lot less advertising happening on those platforms. They really got hurt when Apple decided to lock down their systems and not allow them to get the same data that they were once getting. Advertisers left the platform and that's why those stocks are down because their revenues are down significantly. So again, even if TikTok does get banned, it's really not gonna help snap or meta that much in order to come back and have good earnings in the future. This is something where we could see the stocks rise, but then once those earnings come out and people are like, oh wait, that really didn't help, then the stocks just go right back down. Now we've got to talk about the Fed meeting that was happening Tuesday and Wednesday and the fact that the Federal Reserve is going to announce a rate increase on Wednesday. Now you have to understand there are two directives for the Federal Reserve or our central bank here in the United States. The first directive is to get inflation down. The second directive is to keep the employment labor market strong. The Federal Reserve has to do both at the same time. Now the Federal Reserve really only has two tools in its tool belt. One is to raise interest rates with the Fed overnight rate. And the second is to buy or sell bonds, specifically US treasuries and mortgage backed securities. As the Federal Reserve sells bonds, this is called quantitative tightening, 
And what it does is it causes interest rates on mortgage-backed securities and U.S. Treasuries to rise. It also causes the price of those to go down. In addition, when the Fed raises interest rates, this causes the interest rate for everything to go up. Treasuries, mortgages, credit cards, auto loans, everything. Across the board, interest rates go up. Now, we really have to look at the Fed's other directive, keeping a strong labor market, to understand just how much they might raise interest rates by. Because inflation remains quite high, and the Fed remains very aggressive or very hawkish in raising interest rates in order to get inflation down. So let's take a look at how the labor market is, because if the Fed is successful in getting inflation down, but the labor market starts to drop too much, the Fed is going to have to slow down those rate of rate increases because it's starting to hurt the economy. And unexpectedly, job openings rose in September. This is despite the Fed's effort to cool the labor market. The Federal Reserve currently feels like the labor market is too strong and it's causing inflation to go up. And that's why the Federal Reserve is trying to cool the labor market, slow down the rate of job openings, increase the unemployment rate, because that will actually help inflation come down. Job openings were expected to cool in September from about 10 million in August down to about 9.85 million in September. But instead, they rose back up to the July levels at 10.72 million. There are now 1.9 job openings for every available worker, the same number we had in July. So this means that despite the Fed raising interest rates at the fastest pace in history, they have been completely ineffective at getting the labor market to slow down. This means the Fed will probably have to be even more hawkish or more aggressive in raising interest rates in the future. Now, right now, the market is actually expecting the Fed to slow down the rate of rate increases and to pivot, to U-turn, maybe even stop raising rates. But this labor market data that just came out on Tuesday, it shows that that is probably not gonna be the case at all. And there's another thing that points to the Fed continuing to be very hawkish and very aggressive and not slowing down the rate of rate increases. And that is the fact that at the last CPI number that we got, inflation hit a 40-year high. The core CPI, that is the Consumer Price Index minus food and energy, that is what the Federal Reserve generally says that they can control. That is what rising interest rates are supposed to get down. And core inflation rose to the highest level since 1982 at 6.6%. So not only has the Federal Reserve been completely ineffective at getting the labor market to cool down, They've also been completely ineffective at getting inflation to slow down. This means that despite the Fed raising interest rates at the fastest rate in history, they have a lot more work to do, and they will more than likely continue to raise interest rates at a very fast pace since everything they've done so far has been completely ineffective. Keep in mind that until interest rates get above the rate of inflation, we remain in what is known as a supportive economy, meaning the interest rates are lower than inflation, so it actually helps boost and stimulate the economy. The Fed cannot slow down inflation until interest rates become restrictive. That is, interest rates are higher than inflation and at that point, inflation will start to come down. The labor market will start to come down. That means that interest rates have to get above 6% in order for the interest rates to become restrictive. And right now, they're only at about 3.5%. Now, on Wednesday, the Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates by three quarters of a point, or 0.75%. And they are widely expected to signal that they will slow the pace of interest rates after that. 
The problem is the market is pricing in the Fed slowing down the rate of rate increases, but the data, the CPI data, the PC data, the job data, it all shows that everything the Fed has done so far has been completely ineffective. So why would the Fed slow down the rate of rate increases if everything they've done so far has not been enough? It seems to me like they would increase the rate of rate increases. And the problem is if the Fed does actually come out and say, we are gonna remain hawkish, we are gonna to continue to raise interest rates at a very rapid pace in order to fight inflation and lower the job market because so far it's not working, the stock market could absolutely go into shock mode and the bond market could as well. We could see a major sell-off in both stocks and bonds on Wednesday if Jerome Powell comes out and he is actually as hawkish as I think he needs to be in order to get inflation down. But the market overall is just not pricing that in right now. So we'll have to see what happens. Now, I do like to do technical analysis leading up to this. And right now, the technicals are extremely neutral. The stock market is all trading right in between two support and resistance levels. The VIX is at a level where 50% of the time it bounces and 50% of the time it drops. So the markets are 100% neutral. We don't know what the Fed is going to do. Everybody is just holding their breath, waiting to see. So Wednesday is going to be a massive market mover. I personally think it should go down, but who knows? The market will do what the market's going to do. Fundamentally, the market should go down, but we'll see. Uh, technically, we were going into a bit of a bull rally uh, prior to this week. So it'll be interesting to see whether the bull run that started last week can continue or if the Fed's just going to shut it down and we're going to start going back down again. By the way, the futures are currently pricing in an 85% chance of a 75 basis point rate hike on Wednesday and a 15% chance of a 50 basis point rate hike on Wednesday. Again, the market just does not believe that the Fed will remain hawkish. 85% uh, of people think it's going to be a 75 basis point rate hike. I do as well. But it's interesting that 15% of people still think the Fed is only going to do a 50 basis point rate hike. It makes no sense. But that's what the market believes. And if the market wakes up, it could be a big shock. We could see a major, major drop. Now, if you're wondering when all of this is going to take place, the Fed decision will be announced at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. That's 2 p.m. Eastern time or about two hours before the market closes. Now, typically leading up to a Fed meeting on a Wednesday, we will see the market be a little volatile, maybe up or down 1%. But going into that Fed meeting right around that 2 p.m. Eastern time slot, the market generally gets back to zero. So I do don't expect a lot of market movement prior to the Fed meeting on Wednesday. But once those decisions come out and once Jerome Powell starts speaking, get ready for some significant market movement. This is going to be a great day for day traders to make a lot of money or lose a lot of money. Just depends on how good you are. Uh, it's also going to be a great day for swing traders like myself to finally get some clear market direction and figure out which way this market is going to go in the short term. If you got a lot out of this video, make sure to share this video with your friends and family so that they'll be up to date on what to expect for the Fed meeting as well. And go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. And if you're looking for some stocks to buy the dip on as the market looks like it might want to start going back up again, make sure you watch the last video that I uploaded here.